this one is 2.12 and this one there is a pin connected framework that is loaded with this force f right here and there are three members here the middle one has a cross section area a and the outer ones here have cross section area a naught and a naught all of them have the same elastic modulus and we need to figure out what are the individual forces in these members and we can find out the deformation as well okay so if i go to this uh, joint at the bottom here so there is this force coming here let's name these members maybe this one is first second and third there so if i draw the free point diagram here we are going to have f1 going this way for f2 going here and f3 this side and this angle right here is theta from both sides so if you write the force balance equation here and you can see that your from x force balance your f2 is going to be f3 which is true from the symmetry point as well and in the y direction we are going to have f1 plus 2 f2 cos theta equals to f so basically we have three unknowns here f1 f2 and f3 we have only two equations coming so we are again sort of that one equation so how do we solve for the third one we are going to look at the geometrical compatibility in this case now for geometrical compatibility let's say if i call this point as o right here and if you follow this uh, member a o then because of this force f it will try to expand and let's say if this expands and it tries to reach somewhere here so this is the new location of this point when it is following only the deformation that's coming from member o a okay and let's call this one as b so if i focus on this member b o right here now this will also expand because of this force so because of that expansion for example if it tries to go this way here right now this joint here it is holding both of ao and bo members together so it is not possible that because of ao it will go o1 and because of bo it will try to go to o2 right so it needs to find a common place somehow so how do we find that common place common place can come because of the rotation of these members and because of the rotation maybe we can follow these final lengths and take let's say a as a center so there's a possibility that it will be somewhere around this circle here Similarly, if I take B as a center point and with the extended length, I draw another circle in this manner and this one will try to follow that circle. Interestingly, you see that these circles meet at this particular point here, which is going to be our final point. Right. Now, how do we find the relationship between these two deformations? So, if I approximate these two circles with straight lines, assuming that these deformations are small, this can be drawn as a straight line here. Similarly, this can be also drawn as a straight line here along that circle right so now within this these are the two deformations that we are interested in so this one right here is delta from a o member and this one right here is delta from member b o now this angle right here is theta so if i separate this angle out i'll have a triangle where this one is delta a o and this one is delta b o and this angle right here is theta from this you can see that your delta b o is delta a o cos theta now due to symmetry in the problem i could have done this process for the third member also if i mark this as c a similar relationship will be there delta c o equals to delta a o cos theta so now once we have this relationship uh, we can apply Hooke's law for member BO. Member BO will have a force that is this F2 right here. So F2 times length of member BO divided by elastic modulus E and the cross section area for BO is given as A0. This will be equals to member AO has force F1 and length for this is L which is given right here times cos theta divided by elastic modulus E and the cross section area for this is A. So this E and E will cancel out. Now this LBO, which is this right here, based on this triangle, this triangle can be written as L divided by cos theta. So now if I substitute this, you can see that your F2 is equals to F1 times A0 divided by A, and there will be two cos thetas combining 
so there is a cos square theta there so now i can take this value of f2 and substitute in this equation which was your force balance equation right here so this gives us if i take f1 common i can get 1 plus 2 times a naught divided by a cos cube theta this is equals to f so i can write my f1 equals to f divided by 1 plus 2a naught over a cos cube theta similarly if i use this one right here which is giving us the value of f2 your f2 can be written as a naught by a cos square theta that goes on top divided by same denominator which is 1 plus 2 a naught over a cos cube theta times f so these are the member forces and f2 and f3 same so we have all the member forces now once we have forces if we are interested in finding out delta we can do delta by uh, for example if the vertical force we are interested in that is our f1 times l divided by e times a so f1 value is right here we can substitute and get the value of delta there 